Hmm. Ragna. Fight me! Ragna reminds me of someone. I wonder who. I'm done. I finally beat the game. Oh, what? One more level? No! 100 stars? Hi, and welcome back to Pixel Play. Today, we venture into the world of Wargroove. Wargroove's vibrant, colored, and 8-bit style definitely won me over, and I was so compelled to immediately buy the game, give it a try, and actually beating it for the course of these past two weeks. And trust me, it's been one hell of a ride. And so, having finished this crazy, strategic, groovy ride, here's my take on Wargroove. Wargroove starts off with the death of a king, namely King Merceval, the ruler of Cherrystone Kingdom. He was assassinated by a ruthless but classy high vampire named Sigrid, who apparently works for Cherrystone's timeless enemy kingdom, Felheim, under the ruler of the dead, Valder. While the ongoing animosity between the two kingdoms persist, we see that there is a special key that Sigrid is actually trying to find. It is later revealed how important this key is to be in safe hands, as it can open to a devastating amount of power. Not knowing of this underlying issue at first, we begin to follow Queen Mercia, who has now taken over her father's role as ruler of Cherrystone in trying to deal with the war at hand with Felheim as Valder tries to overtake the kingdom. She and her faithful royal advisor and mage, Emmerich, as well as her trusty canine pal, Caesar, go on this journey around the continent of Orania to find aid and support to defeat Valder. As Mercia and co travel across the continent to the Heavensong Empire to seek help, they pass through a series of checkpoints and many, many hardships along the way, where she meets new friends and enemies. Crossing through the thick woods of the Florin land and the rich aeronautics of Heavensong Empire, Queen Mercia learns of the different stories and problems each region is facing as well as their commanders who loyally stands and fight for the safety and well-being of their people. How I see it, Wargroove is like a multi-dimensional expansion of chess which all connects back to a coherent fantasy story of a princess's personal growth to queenship. Mainly playing as Queen Mercia, we command a league of our own faction which in this case is the Red Cherry Stone Army. To win, you can decide between finishing off the opposing side's commander or breaking their stronghold or HQ down to the rubble. And so, similar to chess pieces, we control our army in how they move and attack during each turns and aim to fulfill either of the two general objectives given to us each round. However, limited to turn-based gameplay mechanics, Wargroove can become pretty repetitive and mundane, especially if one isn't into the whole chess-like strategy game. Nevertheless, having finished the game, I give Wargroove an applause for having managed to invest itself so much on gameplay variations for a turn-based game. What makes Wargroove multi-dimensional in terms of its chess-like gameplay is how it incorporates additional features which makes the game more war-like, such as the ability to capture bases to increase capital and generating enough funds to deploy more combatants to your army. You also have a variety of combat units to choose from to deploy them into the war zone, each with their own skills, strengths, and weaknesses. A few of my personal favorites would be the range-based units like the archers and alchemists where you can attack from a distance. Additionally, Wargroove incorporates all three possible aspects of combat which covers land, the sea, and even the sky, giving you an ample amount of ways to strategize your war move turns and to fend off enemies from all directions. As a commander, you want to place your armies at the highest possible advantage you can be to attack. Speaking of commanders, I love how Wargroove allows us to get into the shoes of the variety of leaders from different factions and kingdoms, each with their own specialized moves, aka their groove. And so, with all these little varied quirks and assortments, I find that Wargroove is able to somehow mitigate the boring and redundant aspects of turn-based game effectively by equipping every mission, both main and side quests, with different goals and possible gameplay features for your mind to captivate itself on in trying to progress through the game. Even though I technically beat the game, for the record, I am definitely not the best tactician there is. I admit, I chose the easy way out by making my gameplay a tad bit easier so I could progress through the game, at the cost of being limited to only gaining 1 star per round. But hey, I was never one for achievements and I've always been more of a story-based kind of person, so I was more intrigued in the narrative of the game. 
which I might say is pretty good. Considering the fact that unlike the Tales games I've known and played like Symphonia, Abyss, or Zestiria where there's actually RPG combat system, Wargroove managed to pull off that similar Fantasy Kingdom plot vibe through a chess-like gameplay. Getting through the end was satisfying until I reached the real ending level. I need 100 stars to unlock this? Let's just say my 3-4 to four days of finishing the storyline but not acquiring enough stars to actually finish the storyline led me to grinding my butt for the next few weeks to finally get through the game. A major well-deserved shoutout to Steam Kitsune's Wargroove puzzle guides and YouTube channels like Clutch City, Stronghammer22, and Jorge Risto for their gameplays and walkthroughs that have helped me pass through the normal levels and actually realizing I may be capable of doing a normal game run in the future. Maybe in the far future when I have the time, as each mission could take at least half an hour or more. War is never quick and painless, my dude. I have to be honest though, Wargroove's plot, in my opinion, is pretty generic. But then again, I feel like if it had been more complex, coupled with the tedious and challenging gameplay, it wouldn't be as balanced as it is now. I think by the end of the game though, I kind of understood how the game positions itself to be. Wielding a simple game mechanic of complex logic and strategy, Wargroove reflects two states of conflicts, between nations, that is war, and the more familiar conflict that is within ourselves. Wargroove demonstrates the miscommunications and misunderstandings of nations that led to war. You don't know how many times I rolled my eyes throughout the gameplay because most fights I had to deal with was just because they wouldn't try to listen to Mercia's voice of reason in the first place. The misunderstandings in this game is so off the chart, I started having my own annoyed epiphany whether this is really how we are as humans. And here we are, making this video addressing it. Sometimes, our bad history with other people negatively clings onto us and when we meet new people, we start thinking or even believing that they are the very same people who have hurt us before. I have experienced this too many times and trust me, you need to learn to give people a chance and see them in a more neutral light before declaring war against them. For who knows, they could have been one of your greatest allies that you missed because of false judgement on their character based on past references. On the other hand, the conflict with ourselves, that is the human soul, is our tendency and capability to choose the corruption of our hearts. I didn't really see it before, but near the end of the game, it was as plain as day. War Groove is a reflection of the human soul's constant struggle with their own inner demons and how we could easily succumb to it if not for our own pillar of strength, be it family or friends. If not for the greed and pride, then sometimes it is the grief of loss or defeat that consumes us into darkness. While battling through the chaos and problems throughout Arania, Mercia undergoes a constant battle against herself with the grief over the death of her father and the uncertainty and the worries of being the new ruler to Cherrystone without her father's guidance. Eventually, Mercia tackles not only the issues between her nation with other nations, but also comes to terms with herself over her father's death and the royal position she is bequeathed with, having learned many noble things throughout her journey with her companions. War Groove reminds us of the strength we have in overcoming hardships and be the best we can be with the support of our loved ones in this constant beautiful battle we call life. But yeah, War Groove is a pretty fun experience if I say so myself. Apart from the tiring and endless trial and errors, I'm pretty proud of myself for pushing through it all. Definitely do give War Groove a try and perhaps it may just be the game for you. Just not for me to play forever. <laughs> So before this video ends, I would like to thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your take on Wargroove is or how your Wargroove experience was. Did you manage to unlock the entire codex? Because I didn't. And probably won't until the near future. Or far. Please don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up and subscribe to us for more adventures pixely for you. Until then, see ya!